So in the last video, we were talking about the situation we sometimes run into. Uh, we know some x values, and we might have this one y column, and we want to figure out the relationship between that y column and the x values. And so really what we're looking for is we'd like to uh, multiply um, our x values by this uh, vector of coefficients and end up with y. And, uh, and sometimes that's solvable exactly. Um, it's generally going to be solvable when x is square, right? We have the same number of rows and columns. Uh, of course, most of the data frames you probably encounter have a few columns and a lot of rows, right? And when that's the case, uh, this will very rarely be solvable. <coughs> uh, so what do we do? Can we say anything about uh, C or find any sort of relationship here? And, and so the strategy we proposed is that instead of solving x C equals y, we'll instead uh, solve x C equals p. And, uh, and this is a nice problem to solve because p is close to y. I'm eventually going to find uh, what that means. And, uh, and it's guaranteed to be solvable. And, and so last time I, I told you how to compute p, uh, we compute p by multiplying this special uh, projection matrix uh, in front of y. Right? That's how we get p. And, uh, and there's a formula for finding p based on x, and I just told you what that formula is, and we're never going to try to mathematically justify what that is, we're just going to take it for a given. Okay, great, so I, I turned it into the solvable problem. Now let's actually do the real work and solve it, and then also figure out how to plot the results. Uh, this is very general, whether I have uh, you know one variable or ten variables, this is the approach we're going to do. Um, I think it's helpful when we're drawing these fit lines to start with just, well, I have one x column and one y column, because then we can actually visually see what's happening. Right? It's kind of easier to understand that, and then just mentally we'll imagine that we're doing this with more columns. Uh, all the formulas will be the same. Okay, so what I'm doing here, uh, I, well, I'm going to do two approaches. First, I'm going to do it very mathematically. Um, I'm going to find that fit line and plot it, and then that'll be like the last time we do that this semester. Uh, I'm then going to, you know, that's going to all be uh, uh, with NumPy. Then I'm going to introduce this other package called sklearn, uh, which stands for scikit-learn. It's a machine learning uh, uh, package. And that's going to make this much, much easier to do. And, and so even if you get a little bit lost in some of the math, I think it's going to get easier at the end and you're going to still be able to, uh, to do the calculation with the help of sklearn. <coughs> okay, so we have to have some random data to deal with first. So I generate some random x values, um, I generate some random noise, and, uh, and then I say, well, y is going to be x, uh, and then the slope is negative 2.5, and the intercept will be 80, and then there's some noise mixed in. Okay, and so I'm going to create a data frame from like, like that, uh, and it's going to look like this. And, uh, and down here I'm plotting that data, and I have data frame dot plot dot scatter. my x column is going to the x-axis, same with y. And I get a nice little scatter like this. Okay, so let's uh, let, let's do what we did last time, which was compute a new column, a p column, right? Because because right now there's no uh, kind of simple linear relationship between these two. There's no single slope uh, where I can say y is some constant multiplier uh, times x, right? If that were true, then all these points would be on a straight line, and, and they they aren't just art. It's close, but not quite. Okay, so, so last time, well, first here, what am I doing here? I'm going to pull out my x values to a matrix. I'm going to pull out my y values to a column. And then I'm computing my projection matrix using that weird formula we introduced last time. L let's just peek at the pr projection matrix. I can see I have this giant thing. And, uh, and, and so what I'm going to do, I have a couple of to-dos here. I am going to add a p column based on that. So, so how do I do that? Well, here are my y's, which represent an unsolvable problem, I'm going to say p dot product y, and I get these other values. And uh, these values here are, are kind of close to y, right? Maybe if I just try to switch back and forth, right? Look at a few of these numbers, keep that in your head. And then when I multiply it on uh, y in the front, you see it changes a bit, but it, it's kind of similar, right? And so this is going to be our p column like that. And, uh, and what I could do is I could just say data frame of p uh, equals p and if I wanted to, I could just peek at that. All right, so there I am. And, uh, and, and let's plot this, right? So I'm gonna grab what I had earlier. And uh, 
where was I doing my plotting earlier? I was right here, right? Uh, I was before plotting both my uh, X and my Y values. Uh, and that looks good. Let me plot these new P values I have just to keep, kind of see what my problem looks like before I try to solve it. And so I'm going to do this. I'm going to pass in AX equals AX. Uh, in both cases, I'm plotting the X column on the X axis. Uh, before I was plotting the Y on the Y axis, I'm additionally going to plot the P uh, on the Y axis now. And I'm going to do that. And, uh, and what do you see here? Uh, I, I definitely turned it into a solvable problem, right? I mean, all those red points are in a straight line. Uh, and somehow this, this line I'm, I'm kind of, all these points I've drawn are somehow crossing the cluster of points before. Uh, but that's probably not what I wanted, right? I probably wanted to have some sort of fit that was going from the top uh, down. And, and so why did I get into trouble here? Uh, well, uh, what, what's drawing wrong is that I only have this X column and this Y column. And so if I'm trying to compute a relationship between there, uh, I just have a slope, right? So, so kind of what I have right now is something like this. I have something like Y equals X times slope. And, uh, and what I want to do is I really want to have um, an intercept as well. And, and so to have an intercept, uh, I have to be multiplying the intercept by something in this table too. And so what I can do is I can add a ones column to actually fix this up. So, so let me go back to where I was, maybe up here. And, um, and maybe I'll just like add right when I create it, I'll say constant uh, equals one. So I'm going to do that now. And, and, and so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to compute if I can uh, find a relationship between y and something times the x column plus something times the ones column. All right, so I'm going to plot this. I, I guess I re-randomly generated the data, so it looks slightly different. And, and then you can see what I'm doing here, actually. Um, maybe this is worth noting, right? So when I say data frame of uh, x, uh, I get a series. If I put a list of columns in here, then I get a data frame with one column. And, and if I wanted to, I could say const here. And, and you can try to see what I'm doing, right? Even even though like these columns here uh, are not adjacent, uh, I could pull out a data frame uh, of those two columns like, like this, which is what I'm going to need down here. I'm just going to say x and constant. And, and so I'm pulling out that data frame. And then I'm doing this to just convert it to NumPy. Okay, so I'm going to have these x values and these y values. And, uh, and I'm going to recompute this. So I, I have this p now. And uh, P is maybe different than it was before, right? P is computed from these X values, and now the, the X has uh, kind of uh, two columns instead of one, right? So a little bit of a different matrix. And, uh, and so then when I do all of this down here, my P values will be different as well. And, and now you can actually see that these red lines that I, these red points I have, um, again, it's a solvable problem like before, uh, but now I actually have the flexibility, right? I can have both a slope, uh, slope and an intercept. Great, okay, so I, I've turned into a solvable problem. Uh, let's actually do the hard work of solving it. And, and so I'm gonna do that with NumPy. And this gets a little bit hairy. Uh, let, let's think about what we're trying to do. So, so ultimately the thing I should do now is I should solve for C, uh, for C given my knowledge of X and P, right? I, I, I already, if I go up here, right, I know what X is, I know what X is there. Uh, and, and actually, well, what is X? Let me be very clear here. You see how this is capital X down here? So this means all the x columns. So x x down below, the capital X means this plus this constant column, right? So, so what I want to figure out is how can I multiply that uh, that matrix with those two columns by C uh, to get this? And I know that's a solvable problem, right? So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm going to say x, which are those two columns, times my coefficients. And, and since I have two columns, there should be two coefficients there. Uh, the coefficients are the slope and the intercept. Uh, equals p, and I know where I got p. p was just the projection matrix times y, right? And this was the formula. This was the formula for that projection matrix. So, so if I try want to swap this all out, I could say, well, here I have x c uh, and x c on that side, and, and then on the right hand side, right? Instead of saying like p, I'm going to say p y, and I'm going to actually plug in the value for p, right? So you can try to see what I'm doing here, right? Instead of p y, I have well, there's a formula for p. And there's y, right? So this is the problem I'm trying to solve uh, right now. And, uh, and so there's some linear algebra steps I can do to simplify this. Uh, one is that I can multiply uh, both on the front by uh, x transpose. 
And so if I do that, I get this, right? So instead of xc, it's x transpose xc. And, uh, and here, well, what's going to happen here? All of this is going to stay the same. But at the very beginning, if I multiply it on the front by xt, I'm going to be xt, I'm sorry, x transpose x. And, uh, and, and there's rules about how you can kind of deal with parentheses and, uh, and linear algebra. I'm not going to get into that. But basically, this is the expression I end up with. And what I want you to think about is that uh, I said that this negative one means inverse. And, uh, and, and you see this piece is repeated, right? I'm multiplying this matrix uh, by its inverse. And, uh, and in a linear algebra course, you might learn what, more what that means. But let's just make an analogy to a regular algebra that you might be familiar with. So if I multiply 2 uh, by the inverse of 2, what do I get? Well, the inverse of 2 is a half, right? So it's 0.5. If I multiply 2 by 0.5, it just cancels out, right? Same thing, if I multiply 3 by the inverse of 3, I multiply 3 by 1 third, it just comes down to 1 and it cancels out. And, and so that's the same thing that's going to happen here, right? This whole piece here is going to cancel out. And so I'm just going to end up with, you know, x transpose x, c is uh, x transpose y. And this is a great place to be. Uh, because, as I'm about to show you, x transpose x is going to be a square matrix, and this is just going to be a vector. And remember that when we have a square matrix times a vector equals another vector, uh, I can use NumPy in, in the vast majority of cases to solve for that first vector. So, so, so let's do that. I'm going to say, um, uh, let, me, let me first do my solving here. Uh, maybe I'm going to grab my matrix and I'm going to say this is a square matrix equals x dot transpose dot product t. And let me just, uh, figures trust, I did this right. Uh, why is that unhappy? Uh, is it is it lowercase? Let me just check here. Uh, no, it's not. Why? Uh, oh, oh, dot product. Uh, I should just slow down, right? It's t is not defined. Okay, great. So I get that nice little square matrix there. And, uh, and what I want to do is I want to solve for, for C, right? And, and so how do I do that? Well, um, I, can, uh, I can say numpy.linearalgebra.solve and, uh, and I can put in two things, right? So I, I'm solving for C, right? And, and so when I'm solving for C here, I can put uh, the square matrix in as my first argument and then my vector over here, right? So I have that square matrix. Let me actually just, um, uh, you know, I'm gonna say like my new vector is going to be uh, x dot transpose dot product y. And I say, well, what does that new vector look like? Great, so that, that looks good too, right? So I have, well, I have from the, the left-hand side, I have my square matrix. And from the right-hand side, I have my new vector. And then I can solve for C and, uh, if I could spell properly. And, and great, so I, I have these two numbers here. And, uh, and what are these two numbers? Well, this is the number that I should multiply by the first column of x, which is what? Uh, the first column of x is just the x column, right? So I'm multiplying that. I'm multiplying the x column by negative 2.66. And then I multiply 81 by the second column of x. And, and remember that capital X contained this as a second column, right? So that's my intercept. So, so maybe what I could do is if I want to pull these out, um, I could say something like this. I could say something like slope uh, intercept equals C. And I can print off what both of these are. Print off the intercept as well. Right, so it, it, it really, I'd kind of like to flatten these. I don't want it to end up inside of this. Maybe one way I could do that is I could, uh, I, I could tell it that, hey, I want to extract that. Um, I think maybe the more elegant way is I could just say, you know, even though the C is technically a two-dimensional thing, I could just say, you know, make it one dimension as long as necessary. And now I have these two numbers. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to use these slope and intercept to draw a line on top of uh, on top of my original figure, right? So I'm going to grab this up here that I have. Uh, oops, 
just like that. And, uh, and then I think what I could do is I could have a line on top of here. I could say something like ax.line. And uh, do I have this right? Let me just, uh, well, that's not actually um, a thing. Just a minute. Great, so I just checked my notes, and, and I think what it actually is, is ax.plot. And, and ax.plot can be used either to draw points or, or a line. And when I'm doing a line, I can do something like this. I can say, like, well, a line should go from this uh, x0 to this x1, and then my y values should go from this y0 to this y1. And, and so maybe let me just try and put some values here. I may say x0 goes from 0, x1 goes to 100. And then, I don't know, I'll have it slightly slope down. I'll say y0 equals 60, and then it's going to slightly go down to 50. And so I do that, and you can see I can just play with this line. Maybe let me make it drop a little bit more. I'll drop it down to like 30. Um, and why is that not uh, having a more stark drop? Oh, oh you, you, you know why is that my x-axis only goes to to 20, right? And so that's why it looks so so shallow, right? So if I say like that, now I can actually play with it. And I don't know, I could have it slightly sloped up. I could draw different lines, right? And so I want to figure out these values uh, based on uh, based on these uh, slopes and intercepts, right? And so I think the first thing I could do, right, instead of having, um, uh, instead of having, uh, these hard coded right from zero to twenty. I'd like to pull that out of my x limit and y limit, right? So I could say um, uh, ax dot get x limit, uh, which is a tuple, and I can get that at position zero. Let me try that. Actually, maybe is it get x lim rate it is. Uh, so that's the left hand side of my plot, and then the right hand side of my plot is good. And, and then what I want to do is I want to compute y zero from this one. And I want to compute y1 from this one. And, and so how do I plug this into my equations if I have a line? Well, y equals the slope times uh, the x plus the intercept. That's how we that's how we compute a y, right? And, and then the same deal down here, right? Except that I'm, I'm computing a different y for a different x. So I do that. And now I see I have this straight line that goes exactly through that solvable problem that I had. Right, and so that's how I can plot a fit line. And maybe I would do something else like, uh, uh, I don't know, maybe I make it like red or something like that. Or maybe maybe like a gray is better since I already have, uh, oh, that's green. So maybe like a gray would be uh, a good thing to do in this situation. Great, so I solved it. Okay, it, it, so this got complicated, right? I, I guess like I had to, um, it got complicated in a few ways. One was that, you know, computing the projection matrix was pretty pretty tricky, right? That was complicated. Uh, I also had to try to pull out these individual, individual matrices and ask linear algebra to do something for me. So I may introduce an easy way to do this now that we've kind of uh, kind of seen the guts of what happens, and that is that we can use sklearn. And so sklearn stands for scikit-learn, and it has a lot of different tools in it that you should explore. Uh, and there's a collection of those tools that are under linear models. And so what we've been doing right now is a linear model, right? I'm trying to fit that straight line to it, and so uh, that's called a linear regression. And so what I'm going to do is create a new linear regression object like that. And let me just try to peek at that. Okay, and, and what's nice about it is it's showing me, well, what are the, the default um, uh, parameters, or I guess arguments that are used to, to create this thing. And, uh, and, and so one of the things that it has here is, well, do I want to fit the intercept? Um, remember that before I had to manually add in this um, ones column in order to do the math, if fit intercept is true, uh, then sklearn will automatically add that for me, right? So, so that's kind of great. I don't need to worry about that anymore. Um, and, and so there's a few steps to this. One is that uh, I have to do what is called fitting. So I could say lr.fit, and let me just look here. You can see that I'm passing in both. Uh, oh, how do I? Excuse me. You can see that I'm passing in both an x and a y. And so let me try that. So from my data frame, I'm just going to say data frame, uh, my x column, and data frame, uh, my y column. And that looks good. And then it complains. And uh, what is it saying down here? 
it, it's saying some sort of thing about reshape. And, uh, and what is it trying to do? I guess what it's trying to do is it's trying to make me make my um, X data be two-dimensional, right? And that's why it's trying to, I'm passing in two numbers here because it wants to be two-dimensional, however many rows necessary in, in one column. And, uh, and this is a slightly misleading error message because that's what I would do. That's what I would do if, if this were um, a NumPy thing, right? If this were NumPy, I could, I could reshape it like they're suggesting. But it's not NumPy. This is a panda series, and so it's not trying to work. And, um, and so one of the cool things here is that um, pandas, since it's built on NumPy, can often be used just in place of where you would normally have um, a NumPy object. But some of these error messages are going to be misleading because they, the, the people writing the error messages had NumPy in mind. So what it really wants, though, is it wants something two-dimensional. Right? Maybe that's the best thing for me to take away from here. Expect a 2D array, but not 1D. Uh, when I see 2D array, if I'm trying to use pandas, um, I'm just trying to translate that mentally to be, hey, it expected to have, have a data frame. And so what this fit uh, method is expecting is that this should be a data frame and this should be a single column. Right, so I'm going to try to convert this to a data frame. It, whenever you are pulling out a single column, that's really easy, right? I could just say, like, uh, instead of pulling out one column, I could have a list of columns, right? I mean, I could do something like this, right? And then I'd have a, a data frame smaller. Or if I just have a list with one thing in it, well, that's one easy way to get a, a data frame with one column, right? So let me delete this and paste this here. And I run that. And, uh, and that was kind of anticlimactic, right? But, but it actually did all the computation for me. And so where do, can I find that? If I say dir on LR, I can see all of the things that this object has. And, um, and, and there's two things I'm interested in. I'm interested in the coefficient, and I'm interested in the intercept. You can see that they pulled these out into separate variables, uh, unlike before. Before, my C had both those numbers in them. So, so let me just do that. I'm going to say print uh, LR.coefficients. It's kind of weird, like all these things that get computed automatically. They're attributes, not function, or they're attributes, not methods. So I want to do this, and they tend to end, end with an underscore, right? So that's my slope, and then this one is my um, intercept, and I have these two numbers. And, uh, and generally, there's a one intercept, and uh, here I also have one slope because it's just one x value. Um, it, it's pulling this out as an array because um, uh, in the general case, right, I have might have many columns that that I'm, I'm kind of looking at. So I'm just going to pull this out since I only have one thing here, and I'm just going to say, well, here's my slope, and uh, and here's my intercept, just like that. And, and maybe I'll just print both of those, right? I'll just say like slope and intercept, and you can see right away that they're the same values as before. And, and so what that means is that the same plotting I did before is going to work in the same way, right? It's just going to use these values I got from sklearn now, and uh, and it's exactly the same thing. And also, just to be kind of clear, I wouldn't have this anymore. Uh, here I'm plotting the p-values. Uh, when I'm doing this process, which is, is probably what you're going to mostly be doing as a data scientist, uh, you will, um, you'll never actually probably compute that, those p-values, right? So, so maybe just to kind of combine this all down, it's actually not a lot of code here. I'm just going to put it all in one cell so we can see what the steps are. Right, just these five lines of code kind of a good formula to have in mind, right? You might eventually add other things here, but this is how I'll get the slope of the intercept. And then really the complexity is really kind of around the plotting, right? Like I'm doing down here.